Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Art Party. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, this is a recorded virtual space, so feel free to leave your camera on, camera on or off, whatever feels best for you. Uh, feel free to take breaks at any point that you need. Uh, you'll get an email with the recording of this workshop if you want to revisit any of the techniques that we covered today, or you just want some more time to create. Uh, my name is Mikey. I'll be running the chat, so feel free to put any questions or comments there. Um, I'd like to introduce you to our teaching artist today. Um, uh, she's a poet, um, a good friend, Cadet. Hello! Thank you, Mikey. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for our art party today. This is our poetry art party, where we're going to be exploring poems as self-portraits. I'm curious, before we get started, if you're willing to share, you can use your mic, you can use the chat. What is your favorite emoji? Ooh, I see a <laughs> laughing, crying emoji and a kitty emoji. I think mine is the emoji that salutes where you can only see half the face. That's my favorite right now. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing your emojis. Oh, the fingernail polish. I love it. Yes, I always just see the little, the little, well, I can't show you. There you go. It's like just this to the side. Ooh, a heart. Beautiful. Yes, the nail emoji. There it is. And mind blown. Oh, where it has like the at the top. Yeah. Wow. Now I want to do a workshop where we're just acting out emojis. Um, sweet. So yeah, I'm Keren and I'm a poet. I like to work with visual art mediums as well. Um, and some aspects of performance. And so when I work with poetry, I like to think about words on the page also, not just the words that we're using, but what do they look like on the page? If the page were a stage, where do they live? Ooh, upside down smiley face emoji. Thank you, Maria. So I wanna let you all know that for the duration of our workshop, thank you, shrimp emoji. Oh my gosh, I asked, I asked such an exciting question that now I'm just getting distracted by the emojis. Um, I wanted to let you know that for the rest of the workshop, you can choose to engage in the way that feels best to you. If you want to um, share out loud, I might ask you to uh, share writing at one point. It's completely optional. You could hold your notebook up to the camera if you like. You could um, unmute yourself and share your writing, or you could use the chat. So those are some options for you to engage. Um, I think something that's important to share before we get started. Also, one of the ways that I think about poetry, and I've heard another, other poets also share, that poetry is as, is as much of a physical art as dancing. And so I just want to kind of leave that with you as we go into thinking about self-portraiture and writing. What if poetry is as much of a physical art as dancing? Today, you'll go through a generative workshop where we'll really just be focusing on generating content and you'll leave um, with maybe the start of a poem or pieces of a poem that then you can take on your own and uh, make creative choices about how this thing will live that you've created. Um, I'm curious, when I say the word self-portrait, what are some things that start to come to mind? You can, again, choose to share. You can unmute yourself. You can use the chat, whatever you like. But what is that, those, that word, self-portrait? What does that mean to you? Ooh, a painting, my glasses. Hmm. Yeah, when I think of a painting, I think of something that maybe I see displayed that's external. And then when I think of the glasses, it seems like there might be a part of who I am that is really important in like capturing my essence. Yeah, like a physical object. Hmm. Hmm. So to me, it seems that I'm expressing who I think I am as a person or on the inside. Yeah. Reflection, life, heart, being. Hmm. So it seems like there's also this relationship between, even in the self-portrait, right, where self is me, there's aspects that are outside, and then there's aspects on inside that maybe we don't, we don't perceive or see with, all, with um, all of our senses the way we would maybe an object. 
Mm. I think of continue, yeah, of blind contour. Mm, yeah, I've done like a blind contour portrait, right? Very cool. Thank you all for sharing. I kind of want to keep um, just holding on to that, like uh, what we're coming into this workshop thinking about, what is a self-portrait? Where do we usually see them? Why do we make, why, why would we make a self-portrait, right? Just hold on to those, those thoughts and ideas that we're coming in with. Um, before we go into a moment of like a slideshow with some more information, I wanna make sure you all have the materials that you need. Do you have a journal or paper and then something to write with? Cool, thank you. Yeah, I got my kit here, awesome. Thank you, thumbs up. Sweet, so let me pop over here. Cool. Awesome. Then we'll go ahead and jump right into the slideshow. So I mentioned a little bit earlier today uh, that we'll be working on a first draft of a poem. We're working on content for creating a poem. Um, to help us and guide us in this self-portrait poem journey, we're going to be honing in on the ekphrasis poetry form. And you'll also then learn tools for how to generate writing on your own, should you want to keep writing after this time together. So what is ekphrasis? Ekphrasis is a form of poetry or writing. It can also just be creative writing. It can be historical, uh, like nonfiction. Ekphrasis really is just a word to say that we're writing and we're in response to something that we see. Um, sometimes this is in response to paintings. Sometimes, like someone mentioned, we're thinking about self-portraits. Sometimes you can think about um, ekphrasis being uh, in response to museums that hold very, very uh, varieties of visual art. Um, but there's also ekphrasis about parks. There are, there's a poet named Cole Swinson and she has an entire collection of poetry. And I think most of her poems have to do with walking, like that, the, the, the relationship between walking in, in nature and writing a poem that you can write while you walk. Um, and so spaces like garden, but also memory, that if we're writing a poem or writing something about a memory, that is in a way ekphrastic because I'm writing about something visual. Um, even if it's not physically here in front of me anymore. And so when we think about ekphrasis and visual, when I first learned about ekphrastic poetry, I was like, oh, well, you're just describing what you see. And I think description is a part of it. Um, you might want to describe the details. Someone mentioned earlier your glasses, right? I might want to describe, if I want to capture my glasses, I might want to describe the shape or the color of my glasses. Um, but there's also the aspect of just of documenting, of keeping track of, um, of responding to like engaging with what you're right, like what is coming up for me? What does it make me think of? Um, it's also can be a form of research. What are you studying? What's the question that you're asking? Um, you can use your senses, you can explore ideas, um, and you can ask questions. One of um, the aspects of a, a field of poetry called conceptual poetry is to ask questions and not try and answer them, or, or to not uh, assume that you need to have an answer in order for your writing to be valuable. And so I wanna encourage all of us, we're all jumping into this journey together, um, you're generating content, you may not leave, you probably won't leave with a full length poem. Um, and so what does it look like to just have fun and explore and write and create without that pressure that when I leave here, I have to have a poem, but rather that when I leave here, I'm gonna have all of these hopefully really awesome bits of writing um, that maybe in the end you can craft into a self portrait. Do I have any questions so far? Good. Sweet. If you have any questions at any point, feel free to pop them into the chat. Okay. Next, we're going to make a choice, okay? So I'm going to invite each of you to pick a team. There are three teams. You're either going to be object team, window team, or movement team. Object team, 
you will be invited to find an object in the space that you're in that's not the device you're currently using that you find the most beautiful, okay? That's the first team, object. Second team, if you pick this team, you're gonna be window team. And I'd like to invite you to find a window that has a view of at least two things. So if it has a wall and a walkway, that's good. If it has a sidewalk and a tree, that's beautiful. If there are pedestrians that are moving in and out of the window frame, that's good too. And then the third team, this option is movement team. So I want, you, want to invite you to move in a way that feels good to you um, in the space that you're currently in. And so this is gonna be, um, rather than picking an object or a window, you're gonna be in movement during the time that we, that we have. And actually, I may need my phone. Mikey, will you pass me my phone in my back? This green one here. Thank you, because we're gonna set a timer and that's gonna be our timing to study and then our timing to write. Thank you so much, Mikey. Sweet. When you have a team, can you let me know in the chat by sending a smiley face or just saying I have a team? Or you can use like one of those emojis. I have a thumbs up just so I know that you have a team. Thank you for the party because it's an art party. <laughs> object team, cool. Object, object, awesome. Movement, cool. Object. Nice. Window team. Thank you for the emojis. Nice. Thank you all. Okay. Okay. I hope everybody has a team. We're going to move to the next step, okay? So now, going to invite you to, for the next 30 seconds, object team. You're gonna engage with the object the way that you usually do. So if you picked a necklace, put it on. If you have a painting, admire it. If you have a shoe, put it on. The way that you usually engage with the object is what you're gonna do for these next 30 seconds once I say go, okay? Then the window team, I'm gonna invite you to just watch the window as you might watch a show. Um, pay attention to the details that you notice, what's in frame, what's outside of the window, inside your space, what's happening, and then maybe what's not happening, if not much is changing yet. When I say go, that's what you'll do. The movement team, you will move about your space in the way that feels best to you, and you'll stop wherever you are at the end of the 30 second timer, okay? Wherever you land, that's it. You gotta stop there, okay? Awesome. So now, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our first round of study. I'm gonna set a timer, um, and actually, oh it is, yeah, haha. I thought I couldn't do the 30 second interval, but I can. I'm gonna put it on now. Awesome. So, on your marks, get set, go. Okay, and that is time. Go ahead and grab your journal, something to write with. And now we're gonna spend one minute writing. Think about what we shared earlier. Ekphrastic writing can be about research, it can be about documenting, it can be about writing about your senses or memories, things that, it, that this experience brought up for you, this object. I'm gonna set the timer. You're invited to write for the entire time. Even if you're writing, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, that's okay. Just keep your pen or pencil moving on the page. On your marks, get set, 
Go. Okay, that is time. Wherever you are, go ahead and stop writing for this round of study. So I wanna check in. Did everybody feel like they were able to complete what they needed to for this round? You had an object or a window or a movement, you were able to move, okay, awesome. Okay. Thank y'all so much. We're gonna move into the second round of this study, okay? And this time, object team, I want you to engage with your object in a completely new way. Can this object fit in your pocket? Really study it. What, what happens if you ask the object a question? What might it say? Window team, I want you to observe specifically what is changing outside the window? What is staying the same? Really observe. Think about what it could become, even if you don't see it in front of you or you aren't perceiving it in front of you. Movement team, you're gonna move about your space again and you're gonna stop wherever you are when the end of the 30 seconds is up, okay? On your marks, get set, go. Okay, that's time. And now we're gonna go into another one minute round of writing, okay? On your marks, get set, go. Okay, that is time. And now we're gonna go into our third and final study. Object team, find a new way to interact with your object. Can it fly? What if it just transformed right in front of you? Study it, ask it a new question. Window team, again, what changes? What, sh what stays the same? What, makes it, what does it make you think of? Is there anything in this window that's not there, it's not there right now, but that you've seen it before in this window? How can you recall it? How can you bring it onto the page? Movement team, you're gonna move around your space one more time and again. Where you stop is where you study. On your marks, 
Get set. Go. That's time. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna go into our last round of one minute writing. Go ahead and finish up whatever you're writing. Cool. So how did it go? How did the study go? How did the writing go? Good. Cool. What did you find yourself like wanting to write about? It was really, I was team window. It was really neat to see how there were so much that things that changed, but also so many things that didn't change. So after each round of writing, it made me observe the subtle changes in the scene more and more, which mm. I usually would never notice. Mm. Mm. It sounds like maybe the things that stayed the same became like a frame and then like the things that changed, like kind of like a grounding noticing even the things that say the same more. That's a really good way to put it. Mm. Ooh, it was cool to interact with my object like I never have before. Rosie, can I ask you what object you picked? I interacted with my beads of courage. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Very cool. The plants and the houses, front yards, and even stairs. Mm. It's interesting to start and stop because it, it makes you think deeper about the same subject. Hmm. I think our volume might have been a little bit low, but what I heard was that it was interesting to start and stop. And what was the last part, Jess? Oh, um, because it makes you think deeper about that same subject. Hmm. Hmm. So like knowing that you're going to return to it another time. Mm -hmm. hmm. Cool. I want to invite you all, if you'd like to share writing, to pick one of the one-minute bouts. And then there's like a little twist to this sharing. So if you choose to share, everybody else who's listening, everything that is shared is up for grabs. So if you hear something that someone wrote that you like, write it down. Does anybody want to volunteer and go first? I can. So I said it was for my first round. I said bright, colorful, smooth, a part of me, and journey. I just kind of did like bullet points for mine. Mm, cool, like a list, cool. Like a part of me. 
Oh, I'm gonna read Amy's. Amy was team object. What? Oh wait, is this your one minute bout, Amy? I don't wanna read it for you in case it's not. Pardon? Is this from the one minute bout or were you responding to like what you noticed to the... Um, I was trying to respond to what I noticed watching okay. him with his object. Okay, awesome. Thank you for sharing. I still want to read it. Watching my nephew interact with his guitar, his object. He is transforming himself every day and his joy is infectious. Beautiful, awesome. Would anybody else like to share one of their one minute bout writings? I'll share. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Flop tap tick toe, flop tap tick toe tick, flop tick toe, flop flop tick toe, toe tick, toe tick, flop tap tick toe, flop toe tick toe tick, flop toe tick toe. Hmm. What was your object? Was it, it object? It Are you team object? I was actually frustrated with the third observation okay. because I, I feel like this is a fragile thing that I don't yeah. want to break, but I was attempting to, oh. Can you fine. show it? Yeah. May I hand it to you? Yeah. This is the object. <laughs> <laughs> but it has a lot of fulfilling little doodads that make little sounds. Yeah. So mm. I felt confident I could explore in that way without damaging it. Yeah. Yeah. What were the, like, when you're writing those sounds, what do they look like on the page? They look like, uh, I used little hash marks in between, let me see. I don't know if they can or see. Or maybe... Uh, oh, so separated by hash marks? So yeah, it's like flop dash toe slash tick slash toe. Very cool. Yeah, so it's little short words, a little phonetic. I'll take that away. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Would anybody else like to share? Well, Sam has one on the show. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Sun shows, sun dries, darker and darker, birds migrate. Ceilings rise. Hmm. Hmm. I like birds migrate. And sun dries. Yeah. Hmm. And ceilings rise. Yeah. And sun shows. Sun I think shows. it's all like this. It's so cool. Hmm. I also see a choice to like capitalize the first letter of the words. Hmm. Thank you for sharing, Sam. Would anybody else like to share? Okay. Sweet. Oh, thank you, Ray. Cars humming through the streets, sidewalks bare during the golden time of day. Hmm. It almost reminds me of, um, like the, I don't know what it's called, but like in a script, the, in italics, like when it's like setting oh, the scene, what is that called? Like a stage direction? Yeah, like a, yeah, kind of like part of stage direction. That was the window team. Cool. Cars humming through the streets. Yeah, golden time of day. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm hmm cinematic, that's a good word. Mm. So Jess said, calm and lively. Familiar beat, indistinguishable lyrics, bottom anchored, top swaying. I was dancing. Cool. I like indistinguishable lyrics. I feel like that connects with the next part of our workshop. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down. I also like how they used calm and lively, like at the same time. Hmm. Yeah. Can you say more about that, Rosie? What about that do you like? Well, I like that it's like, because when you think of calm, you think of like rest and peace, but then lively, you think like the total opposite, but I can totally see how it's the both at the same time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you just for sharing that you were dancing. I think that also offers us like the, um, the opportunity then to imagine, like if someone's dancing and they're both calm and lively, like what might that emotion actually look like? Or maybe it's a feeling, like that specificity of calm and lively, but then specifically when I'm dancing. Um, it's cool, the way that it changes, the way that we, we understand the words together. Yeah, the song is personified. Yes, personification, another good word, <laughs> another good word. 
Sweet. Okay, I'll ask one more time. Is there anybody else who would like to share or who's in the process of typing? Okay, cool. So now you have writing from the three bouts of studying that you've done. You also maybe have writing that you, your fellow poets and writers have shared. With what you have, I wanna invite you to take the next five minutes to start a draft of a poem. Thinking about self-portrait, maybe not thinking about it too much. I just wanna invite you to write and use the content that you've already generated. So set a timer for five minutes. Yeah, 709.
are back. Now, I'd like to invite one volunteer from each group to share the start of their poem. So one volunteer from object group, from window group, and from movement, if there are volunteers from your group. Why don't we start with object group? Is there someone? Oh, okay. Thank you, Rosie, for offering. Yeah, so just a reminder, I did my beads of courage, which are glass beads. I have way more than this, but I just took out one for this. So I said, my journey is a part of me. They wrap me in color. My beads define me. Lively, calmly, hope shows. <laughs> What was the last part, Rosie? Hope shows. Hope shows. Hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, I saw some snaps. We can snap. We can clap. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Rosie. Hmm. I think I remember you sharing earlier in the chat your glasses, right? When I asked about self-portrait. And so yeah. I see the connection there, the way that you're describing... Uh, at the end, hope shows. I don't know. There's a connection there for me. Like, yeah, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, like what is visible, the way we show hope, the way we carry yeah. it. Very cool. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing, Rosie. What about from window team? Would anybody like to volunteer? One of us will go over here. Okay, thank you so much. Um, from the window team, seasons bearing the emotions of its inhabitants, sunlight and warmth radiating through the city like a, like a lost love that returned. Clouds moving gracefully through the blue skies and calm winds, ripped jeans and ripped tides. Mm. Oh. Hmm. Can you read the first line again? First line? Oh. Um, seasons bearing the emotions of its inhabitants, sunlight and warmth radiating through the city like a lost love that returned. Hmm. Seasons bearing. Hmm. That's sticking out to me. Seasons bearing of its inhabitants. Yeah, thank you all for using the chat. If there's anything also that stood, stood out from Rosie's poem or from the poem that was just shared, go ahead and shout it out in the chat. Hmm. Radiating through the city. Hmm. Yeah, Hope Shows is still staying with me. I need to write it down before I forget it. And I will put Rosie next to it, Hope Shows. My journey is about me. Hmm. And I think I saw someone who, Sam. yeah, cool. Sam, will you share? Uh, this is just the start of my poem. Okay. Um, love it. All I see is movement. Why am I so quiet? Trees have leaves, the sun dries, it gets darker. Birds migrate and ceilings rise faster and higher. Pencils are also alphabets dancing and pens making music. Mm. Mm. I heard a question at the beginning of that. Will you share that question again? Why am I so quiet? Mm. Why am I so quiet? Sam, I also have another curious question, and you can say no, and that's okay. I'm just curious about what your poem looks like on whatever you wrote it. Would you be comfortable sharing that page with us? Sure. Cool. Mm, so it seems like most of the lines are almost about the same length. How did you decide when you were moving from one line to the next? Um, well, mostly I just felt like I needed to start a new line when 
I wanted to say something different yeah. or separate it from a different thought that I had when looking out the window. Hmm. So it sounds like there was like this, okay, next. Okay, next. Okay, next. Cool. Thank you for sharing, Sam. Yeah, pencils are also alphabets dancing. Hmm. I love that line. Hmm. And also, okay, earlier someone said indistinguishable sounds. Yeah, I think it was Jess. And now pencils are also alphabets dancing. I'm so excited to share with you all the, um, the poet that uh, works with ekphrastic poetry, but in a way that I think, I mean, I hadn't seen before until I encountered her work. So I'm going to show you here in our handy dandy slideshow. Awesome. So her name is Renee Gladman. She's a poet, but she's also a novelist, essayist, and artist. Um, and the way that I see the connection between her work ekphrastic poetry and self-portrait, I think this quote of hers really like kind of weaves it together. It's never just the object being observed. There is always the presence or the pressure of the one observing. We may be sitting at the same window. We may choose the same object, but the way that we engage with it is going to be informed by our uniqueness. We may even write the same words, but the way that we put them on the page, the choices that we make there are going to be different, probably, unless we're looking at the same page together at the same time, like we're looking, right? And so this is what some of her work looks like. This is from a collection called Prose Architectures. She's kind of playing with this idea and this concept, asking this question, like, what if a sentence is actually a building and what if buildings are sentences and if we use lines and poems aren't poems drawings the way that i think also the indistinguishable sounds renee gladman plays with like creating illegible poems what do you all think about that what is it like what does it mean to make a poem that people can't read do you agree with that? Do you disagree? Maybe that's not even the right question. What, is, what do you think about it? What does it make you think of? I think it makes me feel like um, artists who lean into that are reminded and like remind the observer that art is to be interpreted and all things can be art. Mm -hmm. So if the, the poem is illegible to some, but, you know, being able to be annotated or something by another person mm -hmm. um, that is just to be deciphered by the observer, really. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Because if it's legible to the poet, doesn't that mean it's legible? Another an interview that I saw, or it might have been an essay of Renee Gladman's, um, the way that she describes the process of creating these drawings um, she goes, I was writing and I, I was writing and it turned into a drawing on the page. But in my mind, I had these thoughts. I was thinking and writing thoughts in my mind. And this is just the way it turned out on the page. Um, and so I think that uh, what you're highlighting, um, that there are so many different ways to make art. And I, and I know that poetry is included in that. Um, we may not even have to be able to read a poem for it to be a poem. Um, There's some great stuff in the chat. Here. Ooh, let's take a look. Um, Thank you, Mikey. Yeah, Rosie. Rosie says, uh, "I want to read them." Yeah. Read yeah, I love the deep meaning behind each prompt and how many. Thank you so much, Rosie. I'm so happy that you're here, and thank you so much for joining us. You've been here every single mm -hmm. month. Thank you. It's such a gift. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you all for being here and for taking the time to make some poetry today on our Thursday, today's been kind of rainy in Chicago, a rainy, kind of humid day. What a great day to make, I think every day is a great day to make poetry. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. It's cool to turn words into abstract visual art. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Agree to Rosie. And how color is used. Yeah, I can go back. Yeah. 
I wonder like how much of like her color choices have to do with the architecture like that she is um, she writes a lot about cities like city spaces and living in the city um, and how like the identities that she holds and the social locations that she holds impacts the way that she experiences the city um, and how that changes from person to person depending on like who we are um, and so I personally I see these as a form of self-portrait even though she's writing about um, a building or an object, all of her, all of her, um, uh, like if the way that she talks about her poetry is really looking at like interpersonal and like the and social spaces, right? If buildings are places where people meet, and I'm one of those people, the way I write about them also reflects about myself um, and my experience. Cool. Does it look like the Ukrainian war? Hmm. My, oh, they remind me of scaffolding where the architecture is still in the process of being built. That's interesting. Michael, when you say, does it look like the Ukrainian war, are you talking about this image right now? Or was it this one? The colors, maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it makes me think about... um how poets are often one of the most important timekeepers in, in our societies. The way that poets can write about history without the, sen the same kind of censorship as like news and media. Um, I forget where I learned this, but that people would go to poets to learn about news they were more trustworthy than going to news. Colors may be rebuilding, yeah, history, music. Yeah, she also talks about these art pieces as maps. And so what does it mean for a poem to be a map? And if it's a self-portrait, how does that change my map or inform it? Oh my gosh, I could talk about poems all day. <laughs> Oh, this is, the, this is the quote I was talking about earlier. She says, I made a line, and though it couldn't be read, the narrative of my line began instantly. I made a line, it couldn't be read, but I felt the story. My invitation for you all is, you've now created a draft of a poem, and, I'm, and I imagine you have more writing that maybe didn't make it into this draft that you could use for another poem or a song, or inspire a movie, or um, you could use it to tell a story to someone that you care about. But my invitation is to, to you is to write the poem that you would write if you knew that not everyone would understand it. If you gave yourself that permission that not everyone's gonna understand it, and maybe I'm the only one who will, what's that poem? Before I say goodbye, or open up time for questions in case there is, there is that want, you have these fun letters in your art kit, these like collage letters, and I believe you have a glue stick just like this one. I wanna invite you to use the collage letters and make a poem uh, on your own time later that maybe it takes a shape that you've never written in before, using these collage letters to make your words. What is that poem? So my first invitation is like, working on the draft that you've just worked on, what's the poem that you'd write if you knew no one would understand it? And then my second invitation is to make a poem and use the challenge of only the letters that are in here to make a collage. And I wanna invite you, and I'm looking at Dan, like, could we do like a little, if they make a poem and they like it, could they tag us on Instagram or Facebook or something yeah, with a collage? You, there'll be an invitation to send stuff in to us too, and yeah. we'd love to share it. We, we've always hoped to share art made that's sent us at the next art party yeah. so that we can always be reflecting back. So um, that'll be in the follow-up email. Awesome, so okay, like cool, All yeah. All yeah, because I think my curiosity was like, I would love to see what you make. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what it is, please, I would love to. Um, yeah. 
thank you all for coming on this like poetry experiment with me. Um, I really, really appreciate you all. I hope you keep writing, making art. Um, are there any questions for me about poetry? Any takeaways from the workshop? How did you get into poetry? Oh my goodness, I love that question. I was, it was on accident. I was 17, I was in a creative writing po program. I really loved writing creative nonfiction. My friend was like, you should write poems. I said, uh, she was like, come to practice with me. She was on a spoken word team. And uh, I was like, okay, and I went and that was it. I just kind of like was like, yep, this is it. I love this. Very cool. Thank you for asking, Rosie. Oh, what hashtag do I use for Instagram for the poems? Oh my goodness. Can we send that in a follow-up email? Yeah. Maybe? We'll come up, I'll come up with a fun one. How about that? A fun hashtag. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Okay. Well, friends, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we didn't practice this part. No, we didn't. Bye. Oh, yeah. There we go. You can stay. You can stay if you want. Thank Don't you. Don't leave me hanging okay, here. Okay, I'm back. Okay. I'm back. Um, awesome work, everybody. Um, yeah, if you'd like to share your artwork with us, um, you can do that at the website, and it'll be in the chat. Um, it should be in there very shortly. There should be a link for you. Um, and then after this event, a uh, survey will be emailed out to you, and we'd love to hear your feedback uh, so we can continue to make these events uh, what you want them to be. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback on how to make these events better for you, so if you could take a few minutes to fill out the survey, um, that'll be in the chat as well. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, and uh, thank you uh, to all of you. Thank you to Karen uh, for making this happen. Um, uh, there will be no art part. There will be no art party next month because we are gathering to celebrate the past year of our students' work at Gallery Nights. Uh, so, if you're interested in purchasing tickets, you can find more information on our website, and that there will be a link there in the chat, hopefully. Yep. Um, and then we'll be returning for our last art party of the year on October fourth at six thirty p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, and that's with myself, Mikey. Um, and we're gonna explore um, how he use Zoom as an art making device um, and talk about video art, new media art as well. Um, and you'll be able to RSVP starting tomorrow and we hope, uh, hope to see you there again. Um, and thank you again for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you next time. Uh, in the meantime, keep making cool art. Thank you everybody for being here. Thanks. Goodbye everybody, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody.